afternoon garage. So last week we put the whole thing together, spun around and uh, everything seems to be working fine. So this week we'll try to get the, uh, the cams in and the cam boxes and get it all timed. And normally that wouldn't be a thing. In fact, I have another video which I did the same thing that I, where I demonstrated how to do the cam timing on this. And normally it wouldn't be a thing, but I'm going to upgrade from a mechanical type tensioner to a hydraulic type tensioner. And so, uh, you know, it's going to be a kind of a major change. We're going to have to have some parts, retrofit parts in there to make that whole thing work. But I think it's all worthwhile to have a hydraulic tensioner so, you know, you get a little more right reliability. And, uh, well, let's go back to the bench. I kind of have it laid out there and show you what the kit consists of and how much work this is going to be. All right, so here's what we're dealing with here. So the main goal is to get rid of these. It's, it's what they call a mechanical tensioner. And it has some kind of fluid in it. I don't know too much about it. I really don't care because to care to learn about it because I'm not going to be using it. But instead I'm going to be using these, which, are, which is a hydraulic tensioner. And it steals a little oil from the oil supply. Runs it through, kind of has taps in there. And then it uh, supplies these tr tensioners. And they liken it to like a controlled oil leak, I guess, in the engine. And um, so this kit comes with... The hard lines, uh, some rubber lines, some new rubber lines with the taps in them. And then it has two covers because you have to have a, a hole for the support and also a little hole for um, being able to feed the, um, the hydraulic tensioners there. So I've selected my chain ramps and uh, kind of got everything cleaned up. I noticed also that a sprocket was heavily worn. I don't know if you can see that. But... Um, that wasn't good either, so I ordered just the one sprocket. The other one looked fine, so I have a pair of nice working sprockets here. Another thing to mention here is with, with uh, if you do retrofit like an old box chain box like this, you have to have this spacer, and the reason is is because the boss here is about half the size. You can see it's small, so what they do is you have to have a $34 plastic, it feels like phenolic or something like that. I'm not quite sure what it is, it's not metal. But anyway, it's 34 bucks. It comes directly from Porsche 93105 51300. And uh, that's kind of a, well, kind of a BS thing because it adds a lot of money to a, an already expensive project. But let's put the cam boxes on, get the tensioners in, get all the uh, idle gears in and everything like that. And uh, well, see if everything's gonna work together. Yeah, one thing I wanted to mention too is uh, these cam boxes, uh, you can see the back, this hasn't been done yet, but normally what happens is, is take the die grinder, smooth this out a little bit, and then put some JB weld back here. Make sure not to put too much because, you know, this has to fit up against the engine head, the head here, and you don't want too much. But uh, I think that's to uh, solve oil leaks, and, you know, there's three on here and three on the other one. Uh, seal those up, you'll be good to go before you start. Approximately 10 hours later. Now we're going to line up the intermediate shaft with the cam sprockets. Made a video on this before, but um, 
I'm going to try to make it a little bit more easy to understand. So basically what you do is you uh, measure the face of the cam sprocket here, measure the face of the cam sprocket here, compare the two measurements, and then some shims you can put in here, which by the way are also the alternator shims. So that's kind of a handy piece of information. You buy a five pack of those and well you can use them here too. So let's get going, take that measurement down there, take this measurement up here and compare them both, add or take away a sham if we have to, and by the way, it's really not recommended you put the chain on before you get this done because you're just going to have to fight it pulling it back off. But uh, yeah, let's take these measurements. Alright, 51.42, that's the number. Seventy six point four six. So let's see, we'll subtract twenty five point five. Yeah, that's about well about half a millimeter off. So I think I'll take a shim out of this, we'll see how that works. So three going back in. Seventy-seven point oh five, pretty consistently. So that's about right on. So now I can move on to the other cam. Okay, it looks like uh, one thirty-one point seven seven. So the distance between um, the first shaft and the second one is uh, fifty-four point eight. And so you take one thirty-one point seven seven and subtract this distance. That looks pretty good. All right, time to get those uh, idler gears in. All right, I went to go put this idler gear on here, slid it on the shaft, and I noticed it's doing some chattering as it moves back and forth. And I also noticed there was some galling on this shaft. I can see where it's kind of getting hung up, and it would be like this edge right here, and I put my finger on it, it's really sharp. Maybe go back to the bench and see if it can massage this around a little bit. All right, same thing with this one, it's kind of getting hung up. So I think what I'm gonna do, what happens here is, this thing uh, has similar metals, so one has to give, and it looks like the shaft gives before this one, and then it starts to gall. And so I clean that up with some sandpaper, and then what I want to do here is I noticed that when I looked at it under a magnifying glass, you can see there's a chamfer right there, and then there's none on this side. All right, well, I ended up uh, doing the whole thing anyway on both sides because it's just kind of a sharp edge there. We'll see that this one fits. Oh yeah, I'm putting pretty good side pressure on it too and it's not jumping or anything like that. Well, that's gonna work great. All right. Oh yeah, that moves back and forth much easier. All right, we're gonna start throwing rockers and rocker shafts in this thing. One thing I wanna talk about is the uh, rocker shaft seals. I do have another video that I made discussing this whole thing. It goes into it in detail. Make sure everything's free and well, let's start pressing those things in so we can do this valve timing. All right, set that valve overlap. So we'll start with cylinder number one. Got all the chains nice and tight. Put all the chain rails in. So we'll start by measuring the valve clearance for cylinder number one. And we're gonna use a little feeler gauge. So you just want a little bit of drag in there. It's about right. Sounds about right. All right, now I'm gonna do this a little bit differently this time. So basically what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to set it up with the dots upwards on both cams. And then you're simply supposed to check the, the valve clearance and then do cylinder number one, and rotate it, you know, it's 360 degrees, do cylinder number four. I'm gonna set this one time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I've loosened the cam up completely and I've taken the pin out of the cam. So we're gonna run this cam backwards until we reach the amount of valve lift we want. Let's see if that works. OK, 
Okay, now let's rotate this cam till we get about 0.8 millimeters of valve lift. Everything looks pretty good. I spun it over, feels pretty free. So I think what I'm going to do is I'll stick all the rocker shafts in. Now I do have a video on how to replace valve seals and rocker shaft seals. It's a pretty good video and basically describes how to do it without taking the whole thing apart. Actually, I'm injecting air into the spark plug hole and using a special tool to replace those valve seals. And I also have a video on how to do the valve adjustment. You know, how you take the little feeler gauge and put it in there. And I have the engine out, so you can kind of basically see what goes on here. So I'm not going to film this, but hey, let's put this back together and we'll get started on that intake. Alright, that spun around pretty good, didn't it? Got my hydraulic tensioner lines in, had to bend those around a little bit, but um, you know, I kind of left the covers off. Want to make sure I get it top dead center to where the pistons all the way up on the power stroke. So when I slip that distributor in, I can aim it at number one, and there's no guessing. So basically, what I want to do is I want to rotate it. When I see that intake valve coming down, going under the 360 degrees, that's my power stroke. I'm going to put all the covers back on, and well, I'm going to look at that intake. So next week we're going to be at the bench, pretty much just trying to figure out if I need to rebuild that fuel distributor or what I got going on there. And hey, if you get anything out of this. Give me a like and subscribe if you haven't. It's looking like this is going to happen.